this video, we are going to learn how to perform a cytotoxicity assay. We will first learn how to conduct a mechanistic study before focusing on how to determine the difference between cytotoxicity and viability. Finally, we will focus on the cell activity as reflected by the mitochondrial power. In a mechanistic study, we first want to determine whether the chemical we are testing can enter the cells or not. The chemical could be precipitated outside the cell in the culture medium. Does it get in via the cell membrane, by diffusion, or through facilitated transport or active transport? Second, where does the chemical end up? In the nucleus, or is it quickly removed through exocytosis? The toxicological endpoint is what we always want to find out. First, how do the chemicals get through the membrane and enter the cells? Second, you may wish to know where the chemicals go. Third, a mechanistic study can determine the toxicological endpoint. Four, how are the chemicals removed or detoxified? We may wish to compare these processes in different cell types. We may even transfect target genes to test for specific biochemical effects or pathways. We always use certain biomarkers to study the toxic effects. The most important question is, of course, which dose do we use for the testing? Too high a dose or a longer incubation time can kill the cells, whereas with too low a dose, you may not see any effects. Therefore, you have to determine the cytotoxicity before you conduct any tests. Cytotoxicity tests are used to determine the cell viability or toxicity. We conduct those response tests at specific time points and a time cost study. Acute tests of toxicity are usually conducted at 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, or 96 hours. If a substance is toxic, its effects will be dose-dependent and time-dependent, with a higher concentration on the x-axis corresponding to higher cell toxicity as shown on the y-axis. Of course, the more data points we have, the greater the accuracy with which we can determine the lethal dose or LD50 values, which is the concentration required to kill half of the cell population. The response here, obviously, is cell death. Here are some examples from my earlier publication on testing the toxicity of cadmium ions on a superfish cell line called ZFL, a superfish liver cell line. 96 hours on top and 24 hours at the bottom. From these two curves, we can determine the LC50 values at two different time points one by one. One interesting observation is that at low doses, the cytotoxicity values are negative. Do you know what happened there? We shall return to this question later. The 24-hour LC50 value was determined at 6.74 ppm or 59.99 micromolar and 0.83 ppm for 96 hour or 7.36 micromolar of cadmium divalent ions. Thus, the LC50 value was lower 
at 96 hour than at 24 hour. How do we test the viability or toxicity? We can check the cell number. Remember that although the cells grow through proliferation, we can still conduct a viable cell count. Because the cells divide as they grow, we can determine the cell division by measuring the level of DNA synthesis by the tritium thymidine uptake as a means of reflecting cell growth rate. Because living cells are metabolic, we can also check the function of the mitochondria because dead cells display no metabolism at all. We can even check the amount of ATP produced. Finally, because enzymes leak from the dead cells, we can check the membrane integrity by testing the levels of LDH lactate dehydrogenase in the media. This table summarizes the five methods that are commonly used to study cytotoxicity. To obtain quantifiable data, we have to use chromatic assays. To count the cell numbers under a microscope using a hematocytometer, we conduct a tripen blue assay, which is also known as tripen blue exclusion assay because the dead cells are stained blue. Alternatively, we can use crystal violets to stain the living or viable cells and use and, and use an absorbance of 595 nanometer to read the color after washing with alcohol to remove the background stains. A cleaner method is to use neutral red to stain the lysosomes and read the stains at 540 nanometer. There are two methods for counting cells with metabolic capability, MTT and Alama Buru assay. The MTT assay uses an absorbance of 540 nanometer, whereas the Alama Buru assay uses fluorescent detection to study the metabolic rate and has higher sensitivity than all of the above mentioned methods. MTT is a tetrasolium salt with a bromide counter ion of dimethyl diphenyl tetrasolium bromide, which is a yellow precipitate. MTT detects the reductive power in cells because the dead cells do not show such reductive metabolism. The reduced tetrasolium salt with a purple formazan product detect at 540 nanometer after being solubilized in a solvent. Because the chemical is not highly soluble and the background could be high, most people prefer the Alamba Blue assay. Because these methods do not necessarily include a cell count, they only review the cell activity as measured in terms of the mitochondrial reducing power. Hence, some people only consider them as determining the effective concentration, EC, rather than lethal concentration, LC. Alama Brew is a visazurin sodium salt, an N oxide of the frozen dye of visorufin, which can be reduced to form red fluorescent resorufin because dead cells do not show such reductive power we can add NADPH or NADH as a reductant to convert the resorufin to resorufin in the presence of the diaphorous in the mitochondria now, this chemical is also non-toxic, and thus this method is popular, although a fluorescent prey reader is needed. 
the Alamo Brew method is not only non-toxic, it is also sensitive and shows the linearity of a wide range of cell numbers. It was initially regarded as representing the mitochondrial power or effective concentrations. However, its good correlation with the cell number makes it a good method for doing a cell count or determining the LC value in addition to the effective concentration. In this paper published in year 2000, O'Brien compared the MTT and Alama Blue methods in tests using three cell types, red primary hepatocytes, human cell lines of hep G2 from the liver, and HeLa cells from cervical cancer. All of the tests were conducted using copper sulfate at 6 hours and 24 hours, in addition to showing the different responses in the three cell types, the two methods produced different results. In most cases, Alama Blue provided some useful data. Because copper sulfate has strong reductive power, the MTT approach may not be able to counteract the effects of the copper ions. We shall discuss how to make your cytotoxicity data useful and the meaning of cytotoxicity in the next video. Before we finish this video, here are two revision questions. This slide shows a straightforward multiple choice question. The tritium thymidine uptake assay measures A, the metabolic rate, B, the level of DNA synthesis, C, cell division, D, drug uptake activity, and E, mitochondrial activity. The answer is The last question concerns an assay that I used in the final exam. Dr. Chen used the triple blue and alamo blue assays to determine the effects of cadmium divalent ion on a human liver cell line and found a discrepancy between the results of the two assay methods in determining cell death and viability. When using the Triband Blue Exclusion Assay, the lethal concentration at 96 hours was found to be 450 micromolar, whereas the lethal concentration at 96 hours was determined to be 68 micromolar when the Alamba Blue Assay was used. Explain why such a discrepancy was found. And propose a simple experiment to confirm and test your explanations. Five marks. Try to answer these questions, and we shall discuss these two questions in the tutorial class.